welcome back to another video on this channel in this video i will show you how i made this self stabilizing gimbal platform so as you can see this is has two servos one here and one here now this is a third servo this is not being used currently i'll explain the reason in just a little bit but as you can see it is a little bit shaky and i will explain that in a little bit as well but it works on the principle of using a mpu 6050 which is a gyroscope as you can see it's attached on this platform here and then using that it can stabilize this platform pretty accurately like okay except for the except for the uh, shaking of the platform as you can see regardless of where i move the handle it can keep it pretty stabilized so now let me show you a little bit of how this works on the above camera so as you see the way it works is the mpu 6050 can uh, like it can see the orientations using its gyroscopes and accelerometer using that it can make some mathematical calculations and it then sends the signal to these two servos to change their position to keep the platform as level as possible now normally this would be a triple axis uh, so that's why there's this for roll control as well to keep it even more as you can see now if i do something like this it's turning it so it would need the uh, third axis to keep it completely stable however the mpu 6050 is not reliable enough for handling three axis at the same time that's more of a job for the mpu 9050 so since i only had a mpu 6050 on hand i had to make do with the uh, dual axis and since i just had a third axis uh, built like this part physically built so i just decided to keep it on while keeping the things covered so let me show you uh, uh, the insides of this so the way it works inside is uh, if i turn off this power bank here as you can see inside this tube i actually have a uh, arduino nano sitting there let me just uh, cut off this little piece of tape holding this second tube together i actually have two different pieces of uh, tapes so uh, this is for one side as you can see and then i have another one holding it back from this side so this is just two different pieces of this little like uh, to uh, kitchen roll i am using the for the tissue papers uh, the kitchen roll so i'm just using the uh, the cardboard part of that so inside here as you can see i have this arduino nano this is connected to uh, the three servers the three servers however this one is not being used so they are connected to digital pin 8 9 and 10 or the arduino nano if you can see here closely they are all connected to digital pins 8 9 and 10 this is better shown on the uh, upper camera so as you can see here they are, they are connected to the three servers are connected to digital pins 8 9 and 10 the, on the uh, other side you can see the connections coming from the mpu 6050 so this is ground and power and these are the scl and sda the sda goes into a4 on the arduino nano whereas the scl goes into a5 on the arduino nano as this is here the mpu 6050 i just so you have to make a little platform where there are servos is there as well as the mpu 6050 this is to see where the platform is so it can correspondingly move all the three servos or in this case two servos to keep the other platform level now inside here we on the other side of the nano we can see a little a uh, power rail from a breadboard this is just to power all the three servos separately so the way i'm currently running it is i just have the normal usb plug uh, into the arduino nano as you can see this is just sitting there there's no glue holding this in so i can just yeah just take it out but uh, this is the normal usb plug which is uh, plugging in it's powering the arduino nano using that and for the servos i just have this little uh, usb connector i chopped off one end of it as you can see which is just connecting on to this and these uh, the servos which are going ahead and plugging into the ground and the voltage pin of the arduino nano while the uh, voltage and ground pins of the servo pins all three of them whereas the signal pins are just directly put into the uh, microcontroller so this is just a little way of saving space of course this can be shrinked down the bread uh, the uh, this part can be shrinked down to just using some sort of an adapter or something like that that will make it much smaller and in fact that will make it easily fitable inside of this part as well currently i that's why i need this extra part so i can just cover it up like this and i can st but i can i can show it to the uh, in size by, by just doing this that's why i built it like that so these are both coming off, coming off usb and as you can see it's going into a power bank here 
this power bank is just a regular power bank and when I turn it on as you can see it starts moving and if I can turn it off it stops moving so this is just a simple wiring I'll leave the schematics down in the description so if you are interested to build it but it's really very simple the normal uh, normal I2C for the uh, for the um, uh, MPU6050 normal I2C pins on the Arduino I Uno uh, sorry Arduino Nano and uh, the three servers which are connected to D, uh, D8, D9 and D10 now since I'm using only the roll uh, sorry, only these two servers here they are actually connected to uh, digital pin 8 as well as digital pin 10 the digital pin 9 is this server in the bottom here this is not being used so in the code it is mentioned uh, be behind as you can see the code is running that's mentioned there so I will quickly switch over to the screen recorder to show you the code in more detail now Okay, so as you can see, I am now switched over to the computer. This is the simple little code that's running on the microcontroller. First off, I'll try and explain this a little. So here we are including all the libraries. These three here, wire and I2C dev as well as MP6050 are for the, uh, well, for the MP6050, which is the gyroscopic accelerometer we are using. And this one here is for both the servers we are using. Next, we are start creating an object known as MPU. This is the MP6050 object where we are going to get the data and then here we are creating some variables for to store the data next we are creating the objects called servers and here we are creating the date vari integers which will store the keep this data for using this data which will map it to write the data which will be written on the servers i'll explain this a little bit more down in, a bit later here we are just starting the wire library serial initializing the MPUs as well as attaching the servers on pin number 8 and 10 as I said before so the digital pins on the Arduino Nano now down here this is the part where we get the data using this code here as I said so these are the variables same variables up here for uh, re retrieving the data from the MPU 6050 to know where it is the uh, X axis Y axis Z axis these are the accelerometers X Y and Z as well as gyroscopes X Y and Z these are since this is an accelerometer with a gyroscope, this has both uh, gyroscope value and accelerometer value. However, simply for simplification, we are using only accelerometer value now, not using the gyroscope value. So we have the uh, x-axis mapping here. We are mapping from minus 17,000 to 17,000, and we are setting the range to 0 to 179. So it will map this, map the value between this, and it will create the values between this. So basically like it's like you know it will so so when the value is between something like this for example if it is in the middle so if it is something like zero then it will create the middle of these two as well that like it's proportionally mapping it from here the larger value down to the smaller value since if you write this value directly it will obviously not work since servers not only cannot accept minus values obviously it won't go up to 17,000 so we need to map it between the range of values which the server can accept next here we are just writing the uh, see, checking if our values are correct then we are writing it and we are saying it to make the values equal so then it can continue the loop and write it on the x axis same here for the y axis nearly the same thing however it's just reverse so it is between 179 and 0 if you are it depends on which side you mount your servos if you do it the other way around you can just flip this and it will instead of going uh, the way it was going on like instead of going counterclockwise it will go clockwise or vice versa depending on where you mount the servos then we are just doing the same thing checking the values writing it and then making them equal here we have a little delay since the the servos will just go mad if you put no delay on it and this of course if you increase the delay now it will not it will just reduce the sensitivity so it will be a bit you know delayed if when you are moving the servers, it will like the when you are moving the handle a little bit later, the servers will move. So that's basically it for this entire code. That's a simple code, but it's quite efficient as you saw. So yeah, I'll on that note, I'll take a leave. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be uh, sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.